Hi, this is Lisa Crosby, and in this video, I'm going to take you through a short tutorial on how to use Dynamics 365 Sales Insights to create your own custom insight cards. The insight cards provide the user with a next best action suggestion, and the ability to create custom insight cards with Dynamics 365 Sales Insights means that you can create cards that are exactly what you need for your business, the right suggestions for your people. And it also means that you can use other connected business systems as triggers for these insight cards to appear in Dynamics 365. It's a lot of fun, opens up amazing new possibilities. So let's get started and I'll show you what it's all about. So here we are in Dynamics 365, and you'll see my relationship assistant on the side here is giving me a range of insight cards that are offering me suggestions for next best actions. And you'll see if I scroll down a bit, some standard cards there, opportunity closing soon, email contains a potential lead, you may also have seen things like no activity with an account or contact. So there's a range of standard cards that come with Dynamics 365 for sales. And what they're doing is using the data in Dynamics 365 and Exchange, if you're using that as well, to surface insights inside the system for the user. But you'll also see a little sneak peek there of uh, a couple of cards which I'm about to show you, which are the custom cards that, that I've designed to be exactly what I want. And to do that part, you do need the license for Dynamics 365 Sales Insights, which is an add-on license. So to get started with that, you go down here into the uh, switcher and go into the Sales Insights settings. So once you're in the Sales Insights settings menu, you'll see all of the functionality here for Sales Insights. But for this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the Assistant Studio and the ability to create your own custom Insight cards. The other thing I'm going to do here is just collapse this extra menu on the side to give us more screen real estate to work with with the Assistant Studio. And what you'll see here on the home page is a quick button to jump straight in and create a new Insight card. Some quick links here to information, documentation about how to use the Assistant Studio. And at the bottom here, some of the cards that are available. And these tabs here are actually just showing you the top six for each category. So that can give you a really quick way of getting into uh, the most commonly used cards. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna go into the main Insight Cards menu here so that I can see everything. So what we've got here is a list of the different cards that are available to me. It's showing me when they are modified, uh, what the description is. I can go in and see the ones that have been created by my organization. So these are the custom ones. Whereas when you're looking at the all menu here, you're looking at both the standard ones and the custom ones together. And you've also got the ability to search to find something quickly. So if I go in here and put in unhappy, you'll see it's bringing up anything that has the word unhap, in this case, in, in the menu there. So that makes it very easy to, to jump around and find the cards. So when I'm ready to create a new card, click on this button, and what you'll see is it comes up with a window for Microsoft Flow inside Sales Insights. Now, Microsoft Flow is the thing that's doing all the heavy lifting here. If you're a Dynamics 365 user and you haven't yet um, really gotten into Microsoft Flow, this is going to be the moment to do that because this is the skill that you're going to need to create these cards. And what you see first is a range of templates that you're prompted with. And I'm a very big fan of using templates as a way to learn. Some really good ones here. You can run with these, you can edit them, or go in and just have a look around and, and get to know the system. So if I wanted to go into something like this, I can, I can click through here. And all I need to do is continue to sign into those services. And what it will bring up is, is a, a flow all ready to go. Uh, and I can edit that or use that as I want to. And and just save it and, and we're good to go. So I'll just jump back out of that. I won't save that one for now. If you're creating a new card from blank, you click on new card, create from blank, and the same experience, we're using Microsoft Flow within a window here inside the Sales Insights functionality. And you can just do the same thing that you normally would with Flow in choosing your triggers, um, in choosing your actions and putting it together. And the card that we're going to use to create anything in Sales Insights, to create the card itself, is called, if you type in Sales Insights, it's the easiest way to find it, it'll pop up there. 
create card for assistant is actually the only piece uh, that you need here. So all the heavy lifting in terms of choosing your triggers, choosing the, the, um, the branching and the logic and so on is done in flow in the same way as any other, any other way you do it. And this trigger can come from the common data service here. You can use a trigger that's coming from another system that you've got connected with flow. So if you've got your ERP system connected with flow, for instance, you could have a next best action card that's created on purchase of a new product, you could do this. You could have it connected to Twitter so that when a new tweet comes in, you could create an insight card. And the example I'm going to work through in this tutorial is one that uses Forms Pro when Forms Pro um, surveys are submitted. So rather than going through creating it all from scratch, I am, as they say in the classics, going to show you one that I've prepared earlier. So we'll just quit out of there and not save it and go back to my main menu here. And you'll see I've got a couple here, one called possible sales opportunity. When I hover over it, you get a little preview and another one a little bit further down called follow up unhappy customer. And in the description, they're both called Forms Pro Survey NPS Score. What's actually going on here is that this menu is a list of cards, not a list of flows. So what I'm going to show you here is I've created one flow that actually has branching logic and has two different cards in it. So each card appears in the menu, but they're actually both tied to the one flow. And if I go into either of them to edit, you'll see that I'm editing the same flow. So let's just click through into that. Before we get into the flow, you'll see a couple of other things going on here that, uh, that are really useful. So we've got a description describing what the flow does. You can switch the card on or off. And in the display settings here, you can set something as high priority or not. So where you've got multiple cards in a list, the higher priority cards will be higher up the ranking. And I can also choose which security role or roles will, will see the card where it's going to be shown. So you might have some cards that you want to show organization wide, others only to certain roles, depending on, on how you set up. So you can very, very easily do that there by just selecting or removing the security roles as they apply. So let's click through and edit the card logic in flow. And you'll see here when we were creating a new card, it was working within that little window inside Sales Insights. But once we're editing an existing card, it will pop open flow in a new tab. And then you can also start to see your runs and errors and things uh, in here just the way you normally would with flow. So let's just open up the, the components here. And I will uh, say that I've, I've kept this flow deliberately fairly straightforward because I want to focus on the functionality of creating the custom cards. Your flow can be as sophisticated as you like. You can bring in all sorts of things, have branching logic. The better your skills with flow, the more you'll be able to do here. Uh, but I wanted to keep this nice and straightforward as a first tutorial. So what we've got in flow here is a, a basic trigger in my current environment. I'm looking for Forms Pro survey responses. So Forms Pro survey responses actually sit on the common data service. So that's why this is a common data service trigger. And what I'm looking for in the first instance here is if the content is a promoter. So this is picking up on something in Forms Pro called an NPS score, a net promoter score, which is basically a, a, a question, and I'm sure everyone watching this will have been on the receiving end of one of these surveys. How likely are you to recommend us to a friend or colleague on a scale of zero to 10? That's a net promoter score question. And the definition there is that someone is a promoter if they give you a nine or above, and they are a detractor if they give you a six or below. So what I'm doing here with the custom insights card is saying, as my surveys come back in, I want to identify my promoters and create a custom card and next best action for those people. And I also want to identify my detractors and create a different next best action card, a custom card for those people. And again, there are, there are different ways you could set this up. This is, this is a fairly sort of basic logic to say, in the first instance, let's check if it's a promoter. If the score is greater than nine, we go down the yes path here. We get the contact record associated with the regarding field of that survey response. And here is where the action happens, create a card for assistant. So I'll just talk you through the components here. This is not too hard to learn. This is a, you know, it's a fairly straightforward card. So as I said, if you've got all the rest of your flow working, this is the, the final output of what you want to be doing there. So again, the organization name, the card name is the very top 
part of what appears on the card, the top header. And you'll see there's a little help text here that says no dynamic expression supported. I've got an example of a dynamic expression here sitting in the title, full name. So it's pulling in a field of some kind um, or you know a formula of some kind into, into the card. So the top level heading, you can't do that, but certainly in the title and description, you can. So what we've got here is we're pulling the contact who's filled in the survey and putting their name. So my example that I've used uh, when we go back and have a look at it is Edna Wrightwell. So it will come up saying when she fills in the survey as a promoter, it will come up saying Edna Wrightwell is a promoter. So the description is where I'm actually offering the suggestion to the seller or to the, the reader of this card of what I'd like them to do. And what I'm suggesting here is that this person's a promoter and I'd like the salesperson to follow up with a new range of inks. So uh, my fictional scenario here is, um, is, a, is a business that's producing different kinds of inks just because <laughs> it's a bit of fun. So you've got two action choices here. Uh, what you can do is either when the person clicks on the card, open a URL, which is the first example I'm going to show you here, or you can open an entity. So when you open a URL, I've got it set up just to a, a nice little dummy page on my website there. So the use case here is around saying you want the salesperson to follow up with an action, perhaps to, to show off a new product. That could be a link to an internal sales resource. It could be a link to an external site that you want them to send to the customer. Whatever it is, you can link that to any external URL. So that's one of the options. And if you choose the action input of open URL, then your action input needs to be the website address. And you do need to put the HTTP or HTTPS at the front of it, otherwise it doesn't work. The next two, um, the next one down is action input entity type. I'll show you that when I get to the next card because that's related to the other action here if you're choosing open entity rather than open URL. Then we set the regarding because we want this card to appear in relation to a particular record in the system. So we're picking out the contact ID that is related to this contact up here and we are telling it that the entity type is of type contacts. So we're giving it the definition of a unique identifier and also the entity name. And these are some optional fields here. You can display the card to a specific user ID and you can also set a start and end date on the card. So by default, it will appear immediately, UTC now, and it will disappear after 24 hours. But if you would like the cards to linger a little longer, then this is where you can put that setting in. So that's essentially the, the full definition of you know, what you're doing with that card. And I'll just show you the other example I've got here because it is using the other the other action. So I'll just scroll back up. My no path if the person is not a promoter is to check are they a detractor. So if they've scored less than equal to six then we've got the same thing here. Grab the contact record and here's another example of creating the card but this time what I'm doing is opening an entity. So in the first instance if the person was a promoter my suggestion my next best action was please go ahead and tell them about our new product range and here's a link to where you can get the information about that. On the other hand if the person is a detractor I've said the next best action is that you should schedule a meeting to discuss what's going on and in that case I just want them to be able to open the entity record open the contact record there's no external link here. So again, I've put a dynamic field in here, a different description, and my action here is open entity. My action input is again that contact ID, unique contact ID. And in this case, where before I had um, the contacts uh, in the regarding field, here where I'm opening an entity, I also need to put in the definition that the entity being open is of type contact. So this is the, um, the schema name for the entity. Set regarding is exactly the same and the other fields are exactly the same. So once you've finished creating your card, you'll save it and you will have been working within the window inside Sales Insights to create your card for the first time. And then you'll see this message pop up telling you that a new flow has been added. What's happening here is that your card will only appear in the list once it has run and the card has actually been generated for the first time. So as I mentioned earlier, this is actually a list of cards, not a list of flows. So if you can't see your card in the list straight away, it's because it hasn't run and a card hasn't actually been created yet.
So now let's uh, jump into Dynamics 365 and see these cards in action. There's a couple of ways that you will use these cards. The first one is to have them appearing on a dashboard like this. And the idea here is that rather than a traditional to-do list that you have to check off or a bunch of reminders, you've actually got on your dashboard that you start with at the start of the day a list of insights that have been surfaced by the system and you can you know click through on them dismiss them snooze them give the system some feedback on how useful they were and so on so this is a really good way to think about uh, you know a different way of using your CRM system now with with insights cards rather than rather than manually created tasks for instance and so you'll see the two here that we created and I'm going to have a look at this one first Barbara Gordon is a detractor so you remember this is the one where we were opening the entity record as the action on the card so when I click on the open button there that actually opens the entity record so let's just go back and, and recap there if we have a look at the flow that's the action here open entity and it's opening the contact record the card name follow up unhappy customer title full name is a detractor you can see here there's follow up unhappy customer as the title in purple and Barbara Gordon so it's pulled in her name is a detractor and there we go there's the there's the suggestion for the next best action to take there and because we've set regarding it's appearing on her record. So one way of using this is to, to pull these up from a, a dashboard as we did and click through. The other way is that you know you might come across them, you may or may not use them in a dashboard. You might come across them just in the course of working through the records if you prefer to do that. So for instance, Edna here is another contact, is one of my more regular customers. You can see I've got quite a history of, of emails and things with her. Um, and, and so what's happening there is the relationship assistant is surfacing again, surfacing that card in relation to her. In this case, we've got the other side possible sales opportunity she's a promoter follow up with the new glitter ink range and again this could be oh yeah great I'll grab that product information or I'll, I'll read more about that could be a link to your sales process and when I click on open there it pops up and as I said this is a, a little bit of a dummy page on my website here we've got our beautiful range of of glitter ink so that could be a URL that I'm sending to the customer or or just finding out some more information so those are the two actions that you can take at the moment uh, coming later in 2019 uh, you will be able to edit the text at the moment that just says open and you will also be able to do more custom actions uh, with flow uh, and with with other capabilities Abilities around rather than just open URL and uh, open entity but those things are still to come so stay tuned on that and so there is one more piece to show in all of this if we go back to our assistant studio you'll see here there's another option to optimize ranking so we've already seen that you can make cards high priority or not this allows you to optimize the ranking of your cards based on specific criteria so you could choose to say I want cards related to opportunity with a, a budget amount greater than say hundred thousand dollars to get top priority I could also you know configure a line here to say cards related to account perhaps in a certain city so whatever you put in here it will optimize in order from top to bottom uh, of what you've set up here so that gives you another way of, of optimizing the ranking of those cards and so that's it you've got your assistant studio here which makes it very easy to create your own custom insight cards and this is configurable do-it-yourself next best action you don't need any other special skills you you're just using Microsoft flow and you're surfacing these cards in Dynamics 365 and you can be bringing insights into Dynamics 365 based on triggers from any of the business systems that you've got connected through Microsoft flow there's a lot of potential here uh, once you've got those cards in there we've seen that you can switch them on or off you can rank them by priority and optimize that ranking and you can show or hide them to certain users certain roles within the system i hope that's been helpful and i certainly hope you have as much fun playing with this as i have had thank you very much for watching